everyone, welcome to History on Trial. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. We're going to be doing a review of some dynamics related to the four-year psychological circus that has been going on that has culminated in a symbolic battle between the proverbial golden child and the black sheep. And psychologically, there is a question about whether this black sheep actually represents the Jacobites and their symbolic repeated defeat. So we're going to be looking at some signs and symbols that appear to have planted seeds of race and racial division and discord and ethnic and genetic division. So pay close attention or you might miss some of the signs and symbols that have been a part of this four-year psychological circus. As we go on this quick journey, it's important to keep in mind that the symbolism related to this four-year psychological circus appears to revolve around a symbolic battle between England and Ireland versus Scotland. To start off our discussion about this four-year psychological circus, we're going to set the foundation by looking at these ideas of golden child and black sheep and also the dark horse. And so first we have the golden child and the golden child or golden boy or golden girl is a person who is identified as popular, they are admired, they are successful, they are picked out to be put up on a pedestal. And you'll see this in families where you have narcissistic parents, uh, psychopathic paradigms going on in those families. And you also, when you have this golden child, the golden child's faults are just basically ignored while they are put up on this pedestal. They can do no wrong. And this is in contrast to that black sheep. In contrast to the golden child, you have the black sheep and the black sheep is understood as basically the disgraced outcast. And so this is the person who in a family or a group or an organization, this person is seen as unfavorable by the rest of the family and those who are on looking. And so you have that contrast of the golden child who is seen as all good and favorable and that entity is contrasted with the black sheep which is seen as an outcast and a disgrace this is also tied to those ideas about that which is light is good and that which is dark is bad And we also have a theme in this four-year psychological circus of the dark horse. And the dark horse is basically a person, usually a politician, um, who competes in a race, but the person is not expected to win. And so you can think about how that has played out. This age old battle between the golden child and the black sheep, it's been going on for centuries. And so we were just able to witness it being played out on the larger stage uh, here recently with this four year psychological circus. And so one of the times when you saw the golden child versus the black sheep dynamic playing out was the battle between George I and the descendants of King James VI and I. And so you saw George being portrayed as the golden child and all of those descending from uh, the Stuart dynasty as the black sheep. And so you even saw this play out even when you had Queen Charlotte with the golden hair. And then you had those who were of the Stuart family with darker hair, darker features and darker descriptions, particularly when you're talking about Charles II.
this four year psychological circus was filled with all sorts of signs and symbols. And so we're going to do a little symbology walk to look at some of these signs and symbols that pointed to the Jacobites, also known as the 45. And so uh, the psychological circus has been going on for four years and you will see how many signs and symbols pointed to consistently the Jacobites, also known as the 45. So we are going to first look at the signs and symbols that point to the golden child in this four year psychological circus. While some have been very mesmerized by the circus, they may have uh, pretty much neglected a lot of the signs and symbols that have been a part of this circus. But as we go through this, you will see how the signs and symbols point to certain dynamics. And so you will see that immediately with the golden child. Remember, it's the person who's popular, admired, successful, faults are overlooked. The person can do no wrong. And this is specifically in contrast to the black sheep. And so you can see the dynamics of the black sheep better in the context of the golden child. And then you can see the dynamics of the golden child better in the context of the black sheep. And so if you look at how those entities are portrayed and how they are treated, you will have a better understanding of each one. And in this circumstance, you have Joe Biden serving as the golden child. This is the person who is esteemed, who's put on the pedestal in contrast to the dark horse. And so this person is seen as admirable and desirable in the public eye. And to join with the golden child dynamic is Kamala Harris. And so both Joe Biden and Kamala are presented as the desirable individuals. Uh, they are presented as that which should be admired. And in keeping with the golden child persona, the individuals are usually presented in a very good light. And so you will see them presented as happy, as smiling, as friendly. And in this instance, you have uh, a shared dynamic that has been noted between the two individuals who are sharing that golden child uh, persona. And so what you see is the running mates share a family name and that family name happens to be Finnegan. These signs and symbols are pretty deep. And so you have the golden child represented by two individuals. They jointly share this name Finnegan as a part of their ancestry. And so Finnegan is the beginning of this golden child dynamic and these signs and symbols related to the golden child. And so this isn't necessarily presented on a manifest level. And so it's not manifest it's latent but you have this dynamic of Finnegan uh, with respect to the individuals who are presented as the golden child the child of light and in keeping with this idea of light the golden child you have this name Finnegan which interestingly uh, translates to fair haired and so Finnegan is the fair haired person the light haired person and this is going along with this golden child dynamic and what's being stated here is the desirable ones are the descendants of those who are fair haired And here we have a discussion related to the Finnegan. And so the Finnegan are related to a former king of Ireland. And so you see the name Finnegan is related to royalty, but it's a particular royal line. And so this royal line relates to an early king of Ireland. And that name is underlined because we will not be trying to pronounce it. And as you should have guessed by now, the dark horse and the black sheep is also the entity known as the 45. 
And here you can see the psychological circus that's been going on for the last four years of uh, presenting this person uh, as this black sheep. And so the person has been created as this black sheep after being the dark horse. And so you see this in the media where every presentation of this individual is negative. Everything about the individual is presented as not desirable, of ill repute, and just generally uh, presenting the individual as disfavored or a disgrace. And this is repeated, and this circus has gone on for four years. And so many people have uh, bought into the uh, circus and understood it as real versus simply a circus presentation. And so when you have a dark horse and you have a black sheep, the presentation is always, generally speaking, going to be negative. And that's a part of the dynamic of making someone a black sheep. And here you see the psychological manifestations of the black sheep. The person is presented as a problem. The person is presented as being um, not approved of. The person is uh, presented as just generally a bad person or not desirable again. We're going to talk about why this dynamic of this black sheep and golden child uh, may have been going on in terms of symbolism. And so you have this four year circus that's been playing out and all of these signs and symbols related to light and dark and golden and black. And so we're going to look at um, some ancestry dynamics that may have served as an underpinning factor in this whole uh, circus. So in contrast to the golden child, you have the symbolism of the entity known as the black sheep. This person is not only the black sheep, but as you recall, the uh, first election, the person was presented as the dark horse. This is the person who is not likely to win. This is the unlikely winner. And what you're going to see is that some of this symbolism related to the black sheep and the dark horse, it traces right to the Jacobites known as the 45. The name of the individual, the title that has been given to the individual related to their positioning in terms of presidency is the 45. And so you have this interesting dynamic where the person is sharing the number 45 and referred to as the 45. And the 45 is also the name for the Jacobites, those who were defeated in that Jacobite revolution uh, with respect to the uh, fighting between the royalist and the loyalist uh, King George and also the descendants of King James and so those who were on the side of the descendants of King James were known as the Jacobites and also referred to as the 45. Now what's important is that this is also related to the Hebrides and so there is symbolism that's not spoken related to this individual with respect to an identity that traces back to the Hebrides. There was such negative focus uh, on this particular individual in this four-year circus that the focus was on uh, one part of the person's ancestry. And remember, ancestry matters in totality. And so sometimes people will try to focus on one part of an ancestry and not another part of an ancestry. You will often hear this when people are talking about their American Indian identity, even where they are focused on that to the exclusion of other parts of the identity. And so the identity in totality uh, actually matters because remember your quote unquote race is really about your family, that lineage. And so what has happened with this particular black sheep, dark horse, is that there has been a focus on one part of that ancestry and it's been the Trump uh, ancestry and also the Christ ancestry. And so there's been a focus on uh, this person being descended from the Trump family and also being descended from the Christ family. There has been less attention paid to the person's ancestry related to being a McCloyd. 
And this name, McCloyd, this clan McCloyd, uh, traces back to a very specific person who, again, symbolically is related to this idea of being dark. And you're going to see that, and as a matter of fact, uh, and multiple people in this lineage uh, relate to this idea of being dark. And so we're going to see how this whole black sheep dynamic, the signs and symbols related to the black sheep, uh, relate back to this ancient ancestry for this individual. Now, these are some interesting dynamics related to the McCloyd clan. And so you see some of the uh, heraldry dynamics related to the McCloyds. And so you see the family motto being hold fast. And then you also see a related motto related to this idea of I shine and not burn. And then you also see some information in the middle related to that Croven dynasty that we're going to look at so that you can see the relationship between all of these. There seem to be quite a bit of fighting between all of these clans and inside of the clans in the Hebrides and this particular group is no exception and a significant amount of fighting and so with the clan McCloyd you see the uh, hold fast motto and then you also see for another group of the McCloyds this idea of I shine not burn What's also interesting about the McCloys in terms of the signs and symbols related to golden child versus the black sheep is that the McCloyd clan traces back to Godred Croven. And so this is the king of Dublin and of the Isles, uh, also related to Harold the Black. Here is additional discussion related to this dynamic related to the Croven dynasty and the relationship between the Croven dynasty and the McCloyds. And what's also interesting is that you have the Croven dynasty uh, having Olaf, also known as Olaf the Black, uh, being an ancestor of the McCloyd, the McCloyd clan. What's also interesting is that there is a relationship, there's a tie between these entities and Africa. If you recall, we talked about the name Africa, the continent Africa, tracing back to uh, Scotland and that there are many variations of this name among women of nobility and royalty in Scotland or in ancient Scotland. And so again, you have this sign and symbol that is pointing to darkness, even with the name Africa. And so what you also see here is a uh, dynamic that relates again to this idea of the black sheep and the dark horse. So there's this theme of darkness uh, that is a part of this whole golden child, black sheep, uh, part of this narrative that's been going on with this circus. And this is just a little reminder so that you can see for yourself how this name Africa was so prominent among the nobility and royalty of Scotland. And so in the middle, you also see this indication that Africa or Africa, depending on how they are spelling it, um, was the daughter of Fergus, Lord of Galloway, and married Olaf, King of the Islands, and was the mother of Godfrey of Man and the Hebrides. You also might remember in our discussion that Africa was also one of the daughters of William the Lion. And so you have this name Africa being very much tied to the Hebrides. And so again, you have this child of the Hebrides, which would be Donald Trump, um, tied to these entities related to the Croven dynasty and the McCloyd dynasty of people.
And here you see additional information that again points to this uh, dynamic related to color. So you see the descendants of Olaf the Black and the clans that are related to Olaf the Black. And you have the Morrison clan and their relatives, the McCloids. And so there was a significant amount of fighting going on between these, these clans in the Hebrides. What's interesting is there's a notation about the dissolution of lordship in the Isles in 1493. And after this, you had significant fighting. It was very turbulent and very violent, including including Lewis. And so the Lewis is the place from which uh, Donald Trump emerges. So that's a part of his ancestry in terms of being a McCloy. And again, this has been significantly overlooked in discussions, but this is a part of that sign and symbol dynamic that is going on that places this individual in the role of the black sheep and the dark horse in contrast to that which is considered the golden child. And here you can see along with Clan McCloyd that Clan Morrison traces its lineage back to the son of Olaf the Black. And so you see that relationship again. Uh, these are individuals who are of Norse ancestry. And Olaf was also known as the Sea King. So he was a Viking king. And um, what's also interesting about this is that Olaf also had a wife named German. And so you have these dynamics with these names, Africa, and now you have one with the name German. And so we're going to look again at how some of these signs and symbols have played out in this four year circus. And so Olaf the Black is at the foundation uh, of this uh, symbology because inside of the name is Olaf the Black. And um, you have that in contrast to Finnegan, which is considered that which is fair haired. And here you have another discussion from history.com, which is really interesting because this again relates back to sort of ignoring what was presented. And so it was said that uh, there was a claim of Scandinavian origin. And what's assumed here is that that claim of Scandinavian origin is erroneous. But what you can see is when you look at the McCloyd clan, that there is a suggestion of a uh, Scandinavian origin. And this is related to Donald Trump's mother, who uh, is from the Hebrides, from a Gaelic speaking community in the Hebrides. And again, the McCloids are thought to descend from Olaf the Black and also related to the Croven dynasty and uh, Half Dan the Black. And here you have some discussion about the significant part of the clan's history took place during the 1745 Jacobite uprising. And you had consistent with this discord in that clan, you had uh, members of one part of the clan supporting Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobite cause. And then you had their cousins supporting the Duke of Cumberland's army. And this is related to the Battle of Culloden. And even though you have these entities going in different directions, uh, this clan McCloyd still traces back to Olaf the Black. And so in terms of that psychological circus that has been going on, uh, this dynamic of being identified as a McCloyd uh, gives the sign and the symbol in terms of symbology, uh, provides that idea of uh, being related to that which is dark in terms of ancestry. Psychologically speaking, some of the dynamics related to this golden child versus the uh, black sheep have been pretty deep. And some of the dynamics may have gone um, unnoticed. And so there are a number of signs and symbols that are going on that not only point to one entity 
uh, in this narrative being presented as the golden child or two entities being presented as the golden children. And you have this other entity being presented as the black sheep. Not only do you have this entity presenting as the black sheep and also representing the Hebrides, you also have this individual uh, serving as a black male stand in. And so there are perceptions about black men uh, in the uh, public eye. There are all sorts of stereotypes. And some of those stereotypes revolve around hypermasculinity and toxic masculinity. And these are terms that have been attributed to the individual who has been presented as the black sheep. And so in this way, you've had a lot of vicarious reinforcement and vicarious punishment going on with respect to this idea of being hypermasculine and having toxic masculinity. And so what has gone on is psychologically is that this person serving as the stand in uh, for uh, this hyper masculine, toxic masculine black male, you have this individual serving this role, and then also the treatment of the individual vicariously symbolizes the treatment of those who are understood as black males. And so there has been significant punishment for manifesting things that are seen as hypermasculine or related to toxic masculinity. Specifically, hypermasculinity is a term that is uh, used uh, in reference to delinquent brown male children. Uh, they are often uh, discussed as being hyper masculine and this is presented in very negative terms. And so you have this uh, sign and symbol dynamic going on where the black male or the brown male is presented as hypermasculine and having toxic masculinity. And then you have this descended from uh, the McCloyd clan presented in the same way. And so this uh, descendancy from Olaf the Black, this ancestry related to Olaf the Black presenting in current times as the manifestation of hypermasculinity and toxic masculinity, uh, which again relates to this idea of being the, the outcast. And here again, you see some of the dynamics related to these stereotypes of the black sheep. Uh, and so you see these presentations of the individual brooding and mean mugging and being impudent and defiant and sullen. And these are also uh, ideas that have been presented about those who are considered brown males uh, in the United States. Again, you can see additional images that are usually the standard. You don't see with the black sheep representation, uh, friendliness and smiling um, and a generally good disposition and a happy spirit. That's not what is presented. And so consistently you see these stereotyped images presented uh, that relate to this black sheep dynamic. So again, uh, pictures generally are presented with mean mugging again, uh, being presented as a social pariah, uh, having showy masculinity, being uh, disapproved, and also being presented as a societal problem. And again, this is related to those stereotyped presentations of the quote unquote black male uh, manifesting as having toxic masculinity or, or being hyper masculine. This black sheep dynamic carried over into the ill treatment of Melania Trump. And many people may not recognize immediately that there is symbolism uh, related to Melania, the name Melania. Uh, relates to this idea of dark or black. And so you see even recently this treatment of Melania as being maligned, um, as being ostracized, as being attacked uh, for uh, being an outcast. 
And so you see this uh, pretty much a petty discussion related to this issue of thank you notes. But what is important here is that she is treated as a black sheep and mistreated as a black sheep. And her name, the essence of her name is dark. Some people really got involved in this four year psychological circus and got involved in the circus without uh, really analyzing what was going on. And so whenever you see a presentation of one individual always presented in a negative light, and then you have other individuals who are always presented in a positive light, it's important to question that. And in this particular situation, not only do you have an individual who was consistently for four years presented in this very negative light, you have this individual who as part of the backdrop is related to the Hebrides. And so there are messages in there related to the Hebrides uh, and it's embodied in this particular person. And so you even see the person with given the name, the 45. And this again is the name for the Jacobites. And so some of the uh, symbolism is not only related to this light dark dynamic light being good and dark being bad but it's also related to an ethnic dynamic and a historical dynamic that perhaps is being symbolically replayed uh, with this individual uh, eventually being on the losing end of the battle, which is the same thing that happened with the Jacobites, the 45, and basically the Hebrides. There is a lot that took place with the Hebrides, including a removal dynamic that was very similar to what happened with the American Indians. And now that the circus is coming to an end, um, people may be able to more uh, consciously reflect on the circus and take some of the emotionality out of it. There was so much emotionality going on with this circus that people may not have been consistently critical of the information that they were consuming and all of the images that they were consuming. And so there was this constant consumption of this psychological circus and often it was not critically consumed. And so you had this black sheep dynamic that was running over the course of four years. And there were a lot of messages, uh, latent messages, in addition to the manifest messages about the dark horse, this idea of the dark horse, this idea of the black sheep and how the black sheep should be treated. And you have some vicarious dynamics going on with other individuals who are also considered the black sheep uh, in the society of America. And so it's important to be very critical uh, in the consumption, particularly of media. It's important to be very critical in that consumption and really critically analyzing what is going on because what has happened is there has been a four year psychological circus going on that people have been actively participating in with their emotions and with their thoughts. And, um, and so people have not been critically, consistently, critically analyzing this and looking deeper to see what is this circus really about? Why would there be this dynamic of constantly pitting the golden child against the black sheep? And why is there a need to present anyone consistently for four years as the black sheep? And not only as the black sheep, but referring to the individual uh, symbolically as representing the Hebrides. And so you have uh, the individual identified as the 45, which relates to, again, that clan McCloyd, Olaf the Black, but also that Stuart dynasty. And so while people were distracted by the four year psychological circus, uh, what might have been missed in this symbolism and in this recent uh, idea of defeat 
of the 45 uh, is this idea of a repeated defeat of the Jacobite 45 by extension. And so this is definitely something to think about. Uh, why would that symbolism even be there? Uh, and why has there been this long running narrative that placed color at the center of the narrative? Again, you have the golden child dynamic and then you have the dark horse. And in this instance, just like in the, um, the 45 uh, rebellion, you have the golden child of George uh, ultimately being the winner, defeating the uh, dark horse and the black sheep represented largely uh, by Charles II. And then you have Bonnie Prince Charlie, but ultimately those who are of the uh, Stuart dynasty. And again, you have this representation again of Ireland, England defeating Scotland and particularly the Hebrides. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.